How did Manchester United find Alejandro Garnacho and sign him for less than £500,000? How have United's under-18s become so incredible this season, dominating the league? How did United's academy transform over the last eight years to become one of the best in the world again? You're about to find out. This is the story of United's reborn academy. On the 1st of June 2015, Manchester United's head of academy, Brian McClare, departed the club after nine years in the role. During his time in the role, 35 academy graduates made their debut, including the likes of Danny Welbeck, Adnan Yanazai, James Wilson, Tyler Blackett and Paddy McNair. United was steadily losing a well-earned reputation as the best nurturers of young talent in the country and have fallen behind the likes of Chelsea, City and even Tottenham. The club knew that change was needed and carried out an almost 10-month comprehensive review behind the scenes during which United operated with no head of academy. And in the summer of 2016, Nicky Butt was appointed the role and was handed the responsibility of reviving United's struggling and now archaic youth system. And it wasn't just Nicky Butt, because a certain John Murto, who was the former head of elite performance at the Premier League, was promoted from academy operations manager to Manchester United's head of football development. And Murto and Butt set about changing the whole academy structure underneath them. A number of new scouts were brought in, but notably, Nick Cox was hired from Sheffield United and was placed in Murto's previous role as the club's academy operations manager. And bringing Nick Cox in may well be one of the best things that John Murto has done at Manchester United. Together, Murto, Butt and Cox were not just eager to recruit local talent, they wanted to bring in players from around Europe, so the likes of Tahith Chong, Nishan Burkhart, Milan Bars, Matej Kovar, Aliu Traore and Arno Pugmal were all recruited into the academy ranks alongside domestic arrivals like Dijon Bernard, Lagi Ramazani and Ethan Galbraith. And that was the early restructure which continued under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And in 2019, three years after the academy was torn apart and rebuilt, United restructured again. Nicky Butt was promoted to head of first team development and he reported directly to Solskjaer. And then Nick Cox was promoted to the head of academy, Nicky Butt's former role. And before Nicky Butt left in 2021, those two years beforehand saw United really go aggressive in the European market ahead of the Brexit deadline. That shaped United's recruitment policy at a youth level. In an interview with Andy Mitten, speaking about the time, Nicky Butt said, We bought some of the top young players in Europe. You could see other clubs saying Man United are back on it. We got stuck into thinking that every young player wanted to come to Man United and that we didn't need to work, but we did. It got noticed and it changed. We have to stay on the front foot and we have to keep buying the best players. You, you can't rely on local lads all the time. And between 2019 and 2021, United really did recruit some big names. Hannibal Medjby arrived from Monaco in 2019 for a fee of 10 million euros. Dylan Hugwolf joined from Ajax. Matteo Magia from Zaragoza and Bjorn Hardley joined from Nac Breda. And as 2020 was the last chance for United to sign under 18s players from Europe, there were some other big names. Willy Cambuala, a certain Alejandro Garnacho, Mark Gerardo, Alvaro Fernandez, Isaac Hansen Aaron and Radik Vitek all joined the club. But United didn't just sign European talents. We managed to poach Charlie McNeil from City, a prolific goal scorer at youth level. And all the hard work that had been done behind the scenes for restructuring, for rebuilding and recruiting differently, it was starting to pay off. And it paid off with the FA Youth Cup that was won in 2022 for the first time in 10 years. As United's first team was wavering, to say the least, under Ralph Ragnick, the under-18s were shining, scoring 13 goals en route to the FA Youth Cup final. A final which was played in front of 67,000 fans at Old Trafford. And the team who played in the final was a direct reflection of all that good work. Local lads like Kobe Mainu and Dan Gore and Louis Jackson were complemented by both domestic and European recruits like Charlie McNeil, Joe Hugill, Mark Gerardo, Isaac Hansen Aaron, and of course, Alejandro Garnacho, who really was the star of that team. And that FA Youth Cup win, it's a direct consequence of all the good work that Murto, that Butt, that Cox have been doing over the last few years. It paid off. But this was just the start, and more was to come. <laughs> 
and the arrival of Eric Ten Hag was an important moment. Ten Hag arrived at United in the summer of 2022, just after the FA Youth Cup had been won by the under-18s. And it was an exciting prospect given his track record of nurturing youth at Ajax. And during his first season, it was Garnacho's breakthrough season. And Kobe Mainu also made his senior debut. And both of these players have become first team regulars and stars under Ten Hag now. And it became clear that he wasn't just using these players like, I don't know, Tyler Blackie or Paddy McNair or Donald Love, like they were used by Louis van Gaal to make up the numbers. He had real plans for them. So much so that Manchester United sold James Garner, a player that a lot of United fans felt was a good prospect, but he would have stepped in the way. But Mainu was who he wanted to focus on and create that path for him. But you remember this footage of Ten Hag going and speaking to Kobe Mainu after United had won the League Cup final against Newcastle? He was letting him know, next season, you're gonna be part of this. And an interesting development halfway through Ten Hag's first season was that he wanted to take over control of the under-21s team, not manage them, but control the pathways. He insisted on having a final say over team selection and game time. He wanted to make sure that that link between the first team and the youth teams existed. And under 21's coach Travis Binion backed this up by saying, the under 21's has to mirror the first team tactically, so we have made moves to ensure that happens bit by bit. We will look more like them and the players will become accustomed to it. They will transition easier. After all the hard work that had been done in restructuring the academy system, in bringing in the right players, now there's conversations around the actual identity and making sure that the under 21s and the under 18s can hopefully all play a similar style of football to the first team. Now that football identity isn't perfect at United yet, but the conversations about it have been happening behind the scenes for a while. They're trying to create that continuous pathway to make it easier for the youth team players to break into the first team because the systems are similar. And remember what I said about the under 18s only just getting started? The FA Youth Cup was a fantastic achievement, but look at the under 18s so far this season. At the time of recording, United are top of the league. They've won 14 of the last 15 games. They scored 48 goals. They are dominant this season. And while it hasn't been officially stated that Ten Hag has taken control over the under-18s, when you watch them play, you can't help but see his fingerprints all over the team. They're a hard-working, high-pressing team who are consistently first to second balls. And they are super dangerous on the transition. They look a little bit like Ten Hag's Ajax. But it's not just well-coached team play. The team is also full of individual talents. You've got 16-year-old Shea Lacey, who's been out with an injury for a while, but he's a phenomenal dribbler, somebody who's technically very gifted, a very good set-piece taker as well. Then you've got Jack Fletcher, also 16, Darren Fletcher's son, a really gifted technical midfielder who can drive with the ball at his feet, a very different player to his father, but one who's really good to watch. Then there's Harry Amass, the 16-year-old who's been training with the first team, a dominant left-back who can bomb forward. He's technically gifted as well. And you'll notice that's a bit of a running trend now with the under 18s. And the under 18s coach, Adam Lawrence, said, you can easily get caught up in it. Spending too much time looking at league tables or who you're playing next, at the heart of everything, there has to be what a player's individual plan is, the style the club wants to develop in. And then hopefully, if you focus more on the process as opposed to the outcome, you'll win more games than you lose. And that marks there a different approach to United's academy teams. The main goal of the academy is not to win the league, it's to make those players ready for first team football. And if we're being honest, having one player come through, it was Garnacho last season, it was Mainu this season. Having won a season is an outstanding return. We've seen a very recent policy change at United where instead of holding on to too many players, hoarding our youngsters, we're letting them leave. Whether it's Hannibal going on loan, whether it's Alvaro Fernandez going on loan, Isaac Hansen, Aaron being sold, United are changing that policy, and that means that the academy will become more profitable and that money can be reinvested into bringing in the best talents. United now appear to be more willing to make a judgment on a player rather than just holding on to them. And that there is a big difference. But when it comes to getting the right fees, a lot of work is still needed. Zidane Iqbal left for pittance. Tahit Chong left for pittance. Ted Mengi left for pittance. We have to get better at getting the right prices. And that will come next. But United's academy really has been restructured and rebuilt over these last eight years. There was no doubt that in 2015, United's academy was falling by the wayside. City, Chelsea, Spurs, all of theirs were in better shape than our academy. And the academy is at the core of Manchester United, one of the foundations of our club. 
and it's been massively improved. From the work that Murto did, Nicky Butt, Nick Cox, from the recruitment restructure to bringing in the best youngsters before the Brexit deadline, to then Eric Ten Hag being in control and helping that pathway and create that pathway between the under 18s and the first team, to the youth team winning the FA Youth Cup. It really is in such a good shape right now. And the under 18s, as you've seen there, technically gifted as they are, are dominating that league. We've had Mainu and Garnacho come through and there's going to be plenty more. Who will be next? Will it be Ibrahimov? Will it be Shea Lacey? Will it be Jack Fletcher? Will it be somewhere else? But United have been a mess with the first team over the last decade. And one shining light has been this restructure of our academy system, which I'll be honest, is really going to set us up for the next 10 years to come and hopefully more.